Welcome to the Time Capsule Show, where we explore the meaning of life in the 21st century through the eyes of people just like you and me. I'm Jarenz. And I'm John Ruse. And today, we have a full-time student and YouTuber whose video, I'm Detransitioning, garnered the attention of thousands of people online and inspired many around the world. Please welcome Daisy Chadra. Hello, thanks for having me. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. So, First, let's start with school. Can you tell us a little more about what you're studying and then why you decided to maybe pick what you're studying? Okay, so yeah, I my major is communication. Um, and that's kind of like what I am, that's my practical choice. Um, I like to, I really like writing and I would love to be paid to write, whether that what looks like freelance work or copywriting for a little while, we'll see. And then my minor is philosophy, which is what I, really, really enjoy studying in my free time. Um, and yeah. Could you ever like combine the two in a future career? That would be ideal, <laughs> but it's pretty niche. So, so when you, you love to write, like what things are you writing? Are you writing scripts? Are you writing blogs? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so I write scripts for my videos, um, which is, you know, kind of like a blog post. My 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 YouTube channel is basically like spoken blog posts. So I write a lot of that. And then I do, you know, some like poetry type of stuff on the side uh, and yeah. So you mentioned YouTube. Can you tell us a little more about your YouTube channel? And yeah. So I've been actually on the platform making videos for about a decade. Um, a lot of my, most of my videos that I've ever uploaded are now private. Um, I didn't start getting like a, you know, substantial amount of views until I made a video almost four years ago now, actually, um, called I'm Trans and I Love Jordan Peterson. Um, I used to be trans, but I'm sure we'll get into that. Um, and it was basically just me talking about why I supported uh, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, who was like a controversial um, figure four years ago. I mean, he still is like a relevant person, but four years ago, you know, he got into some controversy with like trans legislation in Canada. And I made a video uh, talking about why I support him. Um, and then more recently, um, my channel got traction when I announced that I was detransitioning. And for the past uh, six months or so, my, um, my videos have been centered around the topic of detransitioning. Can you tell us more about that legislation in Canada? I, I haven't heard of that. Um, oh, yeah. So um, I don't know if you guys know who Jordan Peterson is. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so um, he basically four years ago, when he first kind of got a lot of attention, uh, there was this bill that was, was um, you know, talking about, like, was going to be passed called Bill C-16. And basically, it seemed to suggest legislating, like, pronoun uses, pronoun usage. So, like, if you misgendered someone or called them the wrong pronoun, you could, you know, be fined for that. Um, and, you know, I don't know if that was exactly, like, the totally correct interpretation. Um, but at the time, you know, Jordan Peterson made a video talking about why he thinks that it's a bad idea. It's compelled speech. It's, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that it's like the trans issue. It's not that I'm against trans people. Um, it's just like, it's compelled speech. So he made a video talking about why he was concerned. And he was a professor at the University of Toronto at the time. And when he made that video, he like his job was at risk. There was a ton of protesting um, and a lot of trans people were against him because they were like, well, this is clearly, you know, concerns that come from transphobia. And I was like, I don't think that's the case. And also Jordan Peterson is kind of like, I don't know, he's written more recently, like some self-help books called like 12 Rules for Life. So, you know, he's kind of more of a motivational speaker type of figure right now. He's been on like, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast. He's, you know, popular in like, you know, a lot of right wing people like him. And I don't consider myself right wing, but I think his message is generally pretty apolitical. 
Um, but yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us a little more about your experience as a transgender person and now you do transition? Yeah, so I was trans for five years. I was trans from 2015 to 2020. Um, and I was female to male. So I was, I'm a female and for five years I identified as male. Um, and that basically consisted of, you know, socially transitioning, changing my name and pronouns. Um, my name used to be Ali. Um, and I was on hormones. I was on testosterone for four years, which is why I have a deep voice. Um, and I also had top surgery, which is basically a, a double mastectomy back in 2018. Um, and I started, you know, I mean, I, I, I lived a pretty, you know, decent life. I had, you know, a good amount of friends. Like I wasn't, I was making YouTube videos, but you know, and, and a lot of people like knew me online as like a trans influencer that was kind of a big part of my identity online and you know in my real life it wasn't that big of a deal like people knew but it wasn't like it wasn't like that's all they saw of me was like oh yeah that trans person I I live I was stealth um sometimes like which basically meant that you know I wasn't super open about the fact that I was trans I would have preferred that people just saw me as like you know just any other guy. Um, but as I would make friends with people, I would tell them. And then all throughout this time, I, you know, was sort of terrified at the idea of like regretting my transition. That idea always terrified me. Um, but I was also very sure that like, this is what I was going to do. And this is what I needed to do. It wasn't until I sort of did the last step in my transition, which was changing my name legally in around 2019. Uh, and once that was done, I, you know, still felt like incomplete. And like, you know, I was waiting for that sort of sigh of relief, like I'd finally done everything that I'd set out to do. And it just wasn't there. And I was like, you know, I started getting really like concerned because I started my my body image issues actually got worse. Um, I became more insecure about my body after my transition, which is not what's supposed to happen. Um, you're supposed you, like transitioning is ideally supposed to alleviate body image issues. Um, and, you know, I was like, I feel like I really want to like have biological kids at some point in my life. And if you're on testosterone, the longer you're on it, the like, like the closer you get to basically getting like a medically necessary hysterectomy, which makes you completely infertile, obviously the removal, the removal of the uterus. Um, and, you know, there were those two things and I just felt incomplete. And I was like, well, eventually I was like, I don't think I want to take testosterone anymore. Um, and I stopped taking testosterone. And when I decided to do that, that was basically the start of like my detransition. So this is, has been quite a journey for you. So you did mention that being a trans person was part of your identity online. Would you say that didn't match with your identity offline? Um, I mean, I, I felt like, you know, I should talk about trans issues. I, it was something I liked to talk about. Um, it just wasn't really something that, like, I didn't know that many trans people in real life, actually. I knew a few, um, but trans issues were something that I really enjoyed talking about. I, I, I'm really, I've, I still am very interested in gender as a concept. So, you know, I'm, I do still talk about it just from a different perspective. Um, but yeah, no, that was kind of just my outlet to, you know, talk about it and kind of find a community of people who had similar interests. So um, you mentioned that you've been, you were a trans influencer for quite a while. Have things changed now that you've announced that you're detransitioning or have things stayed mostly the same? Like as far as your, you know, viewers, your followers? No, yeah, I do think I am gaining 
like a new sort of audience. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of variety in like worldview um, in my audience. And like, I think it's possible that there are less trans people that watch my videos, but I still think that a good amount of trans people watch my videos. And that's just judging from the comments. Like I'll get a lot of comments being like, hey, I agree. At, for, like this is from a trans perspective and I agree with what you said, or, you know, you know, this is from a trans perspective and I disagree with you. So there are definitely still a fair amount of trans people watching my videos, but I, I feel like there's actually more variety in my audience now in terms of identity, background, political views, what have you. Right. And so people who are transitioning, it's been, there's been great support in that community. We see Ellen Page, we see a lot of people who have been welcomed by that community. Is detransitioning welcomed in the same manner? How does the LGBTQ plus community, um, what's their take on that? I feel like unfortunately it's not very well received because like people tend to assume that if you are a detransitioning person and you speak about your experience that you have some kind of agenda that you wanna make it harder for trans people to transition and live their lives. Um, and that's not the case, but, you know, I understand, like, like the, I understand the defensiveness because, you know, that was me, like, I, you know, as someone who was terrified of the idea of detransitioning, um, I felt, you know, this sort of defensiveness when detransitioning people would not just talk about, you know, their personal story, but, you know, feeling like they were, rushed into transition by their clinicians or that they didn't receive like an adequate amount of pushback from their therapists. Um, and it's like, yeah, these are problems. There are a lot of people who are detransitioning now and we want to know why that is. We want to like minimize that experience. Like I don't, I don't want people to needlessly go through this like hormone therapy and, and these surgeries only to find out that like, oh my gosh, this was actually a huge mistake. That's, that's a really intense thing to go through. And like, I want to talk about my experience with, I guess, the medical community and, you know, with my therapist and kind of bring up that like, hey, you know, we need to figure out a solution that doesn't make the lives of trans people harder, but also prevents this from happening. And so, you know, that can be really difficult because it does kind of involve um, like a degree of medical gatekeeping. Um, but yeah, I think that is the biggest um, point of defensiveness that, you know, we get from the trans community and trans activists it's, it's that they assume that like we're transphobic. It's like, I'm way too close to the trans experience to be transphobic at all. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just that like we are, you know, trying to take people's rights away when that's not the case at all, speaking for myself at least. Of course. And then one other thing I remember from your video is that you said that you, um, you found religion and that helped you in like, sort of finding and accepting the identity that you have today. Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, um, I mean, my relationship to religion has changed now and I won't really get into that very much, but at the time, you know, I had been interested in Christianity for a really long time, but I felt like I, you know, wasn't really comfortable like practicing it because of, basically the fact that I was trans, like I would go into churches and feel like, you know, I couldn't be myself and I couldn't tell people my genuine story because they would judge me or tell me that I need to change. Um, but, you know, I think that, I do think that coming to the realization of detransitioning was kind of a religious experience, kind of just like a coming back to who I am and reconciling like my identity was definitely, I think would qualify as a religious experience. And, you know, I was 
reading the Bible and like trying to figure out how to pray and trying to figure out how this whole faith thing works. And, you know, since then I've kind of since moved away from that. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that it was a valuable thing for me to go through. So we're now at the segment of the show that we like to call past, present and future, where we'll be exploring three different periods of your life. How do you see yourself now? And how does it compare to the person you were five years ago? Mm. I think I am a lot more like, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable with myself. Um, and I am a lot more accepting of just the person that I am. Um, and you know, I do still struggle with like just disliking myself and wishing that I was somebody else. Um, but I don't think it's nearly as severe as it was five years ago. And I don't think I even would have been able to articulate it um, as well as I can now. Um, I did a lot to be liked because I was in high school five years ago. I was at the end of high school. And so I was doing a lot everything that I could to be liked and to be seen as like this cool person who knew exactly who they were. Um, but I was like, I mean, I was terrified. I was very unhappy. Um, and the, I think I realize now that like the more energy that you spend trying to make yourself into somebody else, the less happy you're going to be. Um, and so I'm not going to sit here and say that like, oh, I have it all figured out. You know, I still have those moments, um, but I definitely feel just more complete. I, I know I use the words incomplete and complete a lot, but they seem like apt descriptors. And taking that into account, how do you think things will be for you in five years from now? Um, hopefully I'm, I mean, I, I, I think that's, that's hard because as soon as someone asks me that, I think of like logistic things, like hopefully I'm married to the person that I'm with and, you know, maybe getting ready to have children. But I mean, I have no idea where I'll be mentally. Obviously I hope for the best. Um, in five years from now, I'll be about 28. So, you know, hopefully I'll kind of be past the whole like detransition thing. Like hopefully it won't take up as much of my mind as it does now. Like I still am insecure. I still feel like, you know, worried about going out into the world as this sort of androgynous person who, you know, looks feminine but has a totally flat chest and a deep voice um hopefully I'll be kind of past that and I'll just be like you know like this is this is me like whatever <laughs> like I'm I'm loved by the people who matter um and I already feel like I'm on my way there so that's great it's like it's been a really interesting and hard journey for you I'd say yeah yeah I mean I think that I needed to go through it. So it's even hard for me to say stuff like, oh, I regret my transition. Oh, transitioning was a mistake. It's like, yeah, I regret having a double mastectomy, but I also, there was no way for me to not go through it. Like to be the person that I am now, I needed to go through that. And I guess it's unfortunate that I needed to go through that, but you know, it's hard for me to really like feel a deep sense of, like crippling regret over it because I feel very secure in the fact that it was just destined to happen. That's true. Sometimes like things just happen for a reason. And if you didn't go through this, then you wouldn't have this experience to share with all the people worldwide. And who knows, maybe there might be others out there thinking of detransitioning and your experience has helped sort of open their mind or sort of maybe feel empathy with someone else who's going through what they're going through. Yeah. I mean, when I was, you know, there was like a year where I was, you know, still identifying as trans, but like having feelings of regret. And that was a really dark time for me. 
because I didn't know what a detransition would look like for me. And I was just like, you know, that was the hardest part, just that part where I was like, basically closeted about it and couldn't talk to anyone, couldn't even articulate it to my, to myself. Um, but yeah, it's, I do think that I have helped people just because, you know, people have told me that I've helped them and, you know, that's very humbling and amazing to hear. Um, cause you know, I understand that like, it's hard if you feel like you might want to detransition to listen to other people articulate their thoughts. Um, it was for me, like I, I kind of avoided listening to detransitioned people when I was having those regrets because I was like, oh my gosh, what if I relate to them too much? And it just like solidifies it even more that this is what I'm going to do. But I'm really glad that I did. And I'm really glad that um, I have this platform and that I'm helping people. Um, it's really, really uh, humbling experience. What would your advice be to people who have those similar thoughts of regret, but they're afraid to feel those emotions, they're afraid to kind of think about what if? I mean, I really deeply empathize and I understand how scared you are to be at the beginning of this or to even, you know, have those thoughts of like, to even ask yourself, like, did I make the right decision is it's really scary to come up to that, to a question like that. And to be honest with yourself, I would just say, you know, there is life after detransition. And if you truly do feel incomplete in being a trans person and feel like, you know, I mean, sit with the thoughts, like don't do anything like drastic too soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, the relief, the relief when you come to terms with that is just like so profound and it's so worth it and it's going to be hard, but you know, you, you can do hard things. People do hard things. That's so true. Mm -hmm. So in your day-to-day -day life, what principles would you say you live your life by? In my day-to-day? -day, I mean, I don't know. I'm just doing my best, I think. I try to love my partner as, as best as I can and love my family as best as I can and, you know, do my coursework as best as I can. And it's, you know, and I try to, I try to just do things even though they're scary, like writing. Writing is really hard. Writing is not something that I just, you know, do as a hobby for fun. It's something that I have to get myself to do. Um, and, you know, I just try every day to, and I have days where I just don't, and I just, you know, am lazy, but <laughs> I try every day to answer what I feel like I'm called to do, which is write about my experience, whether that be in a blog post <clears throat> or in a YouTube video or just in a journal entry. What would you say you're grateful for? I am grateful for so much. I'm, I'm grateful that I am just like not miserable like I thought I was going to be <laughs> like a year ago. I'm, I mean, I've never been more grateful in my entire life. Um, you know, I am grateful for the people in my life who have shown me so much support, which is everyone. I mean, people on the internet, like, don't really matter <laughs> to me. I mean, that's, that's, that sounds bad, but like the criticism that I get online, like I'll listen to it, but the people who really matter, who I know in real life have been nothing but supportive. And I'm really, really grateful for that. And I'm just really grateful that it's been like kind of it's been hard, but it's been easier than I thought it would be, you know, to be a detransitioned person. So, 
yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for like pretty much everything that's come up, that's come from this. And we're grateful for you for sharing your story, not only with thank us, but with our audience and whoever's going to hear. Yeah, thank you. So now we've come to the question of our show where we get our title from. If you were to leave something in a time capsule for people to dig up 100 years later, what would you put in there and why? 100 years later, I would probably write a book. <laughs> I would write a book, not publish it, just bury it and have someone find it 100 years later. I don't know. I mean, yeah, like I writing a book is something that's just like on my bucket list. It's something that I really want to do, but it would be really cool to like write a book, maybe even anonymously and see how people would receive it in a hundred years. Um, so yeah, I, it wouldn't be like, you know, an object or something. It would just, it would be like, yeah, I would probably write a book and try to make it as honest as I possibly could and not worry about like, you know, whether or not it's like good writing or good prose or whatever. Um, yeah. What would the book be about? Are we allowed to know? <laughs> um, it would be, I mean, it's narcissistic to say that it would be about me, but it's hard to not write a book about yourself. Even if you write like, like fiction, it's, it's, you put yourself in it. So, you know, I think it would be, like possibly possibly like auto fiction or like with philosoph with philosophical you know components to it um it would be obviously about my detransition but also just like how should a person live not that i am confident that i have the answer to that but, you know, I'll just put my two cents. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to add? Tell our viewers, final advice, final message? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that giving advice, I don't really like the word advice, but I think that we can all learn from each other from our own experiences. And so I hope that whoever listens to this, you know, has, I guess, an open mind, um, you know, to the, the D-trans narrative and what it means. Um, and if by chance anyone is listening to this who is struggling with their transition, just know that, like, you're not alone, <laughs> to be cliche, and there is there is life after, after detransition. It's, you know, it's hard, but that's, that is, that's okay. It's good that it's hard. If our viewers want to follow and learn more about you, where could they uh, do that? Uh, yeah. So my YouTube channel would be the best place to go. It's, um, it's Daisy Chadra, C-H-A-D-R-A. -A. Um, and I have an Instagram um, which is D M Chadra. Um, and then I'm also back on Twitter as of recently. So if you want to follow me there, uh, it is also the handle is DM Chadra. So. Awesome. Well, Daisy, thanks so much for being a part of our time capsule and thank okay. you our viewers for watching. Please make sure to like comment, share and subscribe and to follow all of Daisy's social media channels. Tune in again next week to meet another amazing addition to our time capsule. See you next time.